What's going on, everybody? And I hope you're enjoying your Hump Day Wednesday so far. This is MYG Jeffy T85, and I'm going to talk about my second half expectations, the unofficial second half expectations for the Brooklyn Nets as we head into the unofficial second half of the season and the Brooklyn Nets get ready for the stretch run until the NBA playoffs that begin in mid-April. So, the Brooklyn Nets now, right now, after they played their last game a week from yet, week from today, last week, they won their game 116-105. to 105. They are now 34-24 and 24 on the season. They are the fifth seed in the Eastern Conference right now. They lead the New York Knicks by at least two and a half games. <laughs> and the Brooklyn Nets begin the second half of their season on a game on Friday against the Chicago Bulls and then another game on Sunday against the Atlanta Hawks. Back-to-back -back games against two teams they should beat. And then they have a bunch of difficult games coming up after that. They have a they have a stretch where they play against the Bucks on February 28th. They play the Knicks, the last time they played the Knicks on March 1st on Wednesday. Then on Friday, March 3rd, they play against the Boston Celtics right now on ESPN. Then they play against the Charlotte Hornets on Sunday, March 5th. Houston Rockets on the 7th, Milwaukee on March 9th, followed by Minnesota on March 10th, Denver on March on March 12th, Oklahoma City March 14th, Sacramento March 16th, Sunday March 19th against Denver. So they have pretty much that little stretch, two out of their of that four game stretch. <laughs> they play against Denver twice. Then Cleveland on March 21st and back-to-back -back on, on uh, March 23rd. So they have a back-to-back -back against Cleveland, which is going to be interesting. March 25th at Miami. March 26th at Orlando, a back-to-back -back there. A March 29th game against Houston, followed by a March 31st against Atlanta, and an April 2nd game against Utah. They should really win all three of those games. Then April 4th against Minnesota. April 5th at Detroit, and then they finish off the season. April 7th against Orlando at home, and then Philadelphia at Barclays Center on April 9th. The Brooklyn Nets have about 23 games left on their schedule. As I mentioned in my video I did yesterday with Jacques Vaughn, Vaughn has got to try to figure out what combinations to go for in terms of putting together this basketball rotation for the rest of this NBA season. What players should be out there on a consistent basis, how many minutes, depending on the opponent, what, like, you know, schematics he's got to put together, <laughs> uh, depending on the team he plays, you know, if we're going to go with a bigger matchup, if we're going to go for a smaller matchup. Case in point, to start it off, the Brooklyn Nets have two games they should they have they should win. When we put when the Nets get back to action on Friday, and then on Sunday, the Bulls and the Hawks are two teams right now in turmoil. The Hawks just fired their head coach Nate McMillan yesterday. That team is under 500 right now, and same thing with the Chicago Bulls. I don't care if it's played in Chicago or Atlanta or wherever it is. Those are two teams that if the Nets want to be considered a serious playoff team, you've got to go out there and you've got to beat those teams. You have to. If you want to be considered a serious NBA basketball playoff team and be a team that's competing right now for the fifth or fourth seed, because right now you have to say the Brooklyn Nets are in a position right now where they are competing to get home court advantage in the first round. It's going to be very difficult for them to catch Boston, Milwaukee, even Philadelphia. <laughs> but it's not crazy that they can catch Cleveland. And I know, I look at this home stretch, this uh, end stretch right now. You got Milwaukee twice. You got Boston still. You have Denver twice. You have Cleveland twice. You still have Minnesota twice. You still have a game against Philadelphia. You still have a game against Miami. Sacramento is not going to be easy. You know... Philadelphia, you still have two games against Atlanta. These are going to be difficult games going down the stretch. 
But if you want to be considered a serious playoff team going into this final stretch, you're going to have to go out there and you're going to have to beat some of these teams that nobody is expecting you to beat. But if you want to be a team that is considered a true, serious threat to do something in the playoffs, you're going to have to go out there and you're going to have to handle your business. Period. You're going to have to go out there and handle your business against these teams. Because if you can't do that, a lot of teams are going to think you're either a playing team or a team that's going to be one and done. <laughs> and honestly, I think this Nets team still has talent. Am I expecting them to win an NBA championship? Absolutely not. Crazier things have happened in the NBA and in sports, but this team I don't think is good enough right now to win an NBA championship against teams like Milwaukee, Boston, and maybe even Philadelphia, who just right now have more talent than the Nets do. I mean, if we're talking about the pre, you know, if we're talking about Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving type thing, yeah, I would say we have a better shot. But a lot's going to depend on the development and how the rest of these players play going into the season. Michael Bridges, Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, and Cam Johnson. How are they going to continue to fit in with this Brooklyn Nets team for the rest of the season? How is Nicholas Claxton going to continue his uh, breakout year this year? How is Cam Thomas going to continue his breakout second half of the season? Some of these other players, is Ben Simmons going to do anything in the second half of the season? What about Seth Curry? Is he healthy and how is he going to factor in the rotation? Joe Harris, Royce O'Neal, Yuta Watanabe, De'Ron Sharp, Edmund Sumner. How are all these players going to factor into this rotation going into the rest of this 2023 NBA season? I mean, you look at the schedule. The Nets have one of the more difficult schedules in the NBA for the rest of the season. But if you want to be considered a team that can be a potential second round team going into these playoffs, you're going to have to go out there and beat some of these teams that not a lot of people expect you to beat. Plain and simple. You're going to have to go out there and beat some of these teams. Because if you can't do that, you're going to be a lot of people are going to consider you a one and done. And that would be a shame because I do believe this basketball team has talent. Michael Bridges showed you a glimpse of how good he can be. Cam Johnson has the ability to be a good solid offensive player and he's got length to be a good defensive player. We know what Nicholas Claxton can do defensively and he's even done a better job offensively this year. Cam Thomas, we've seen some potential. You still got good shooters in Seth Curry, Patty Mills, Joe Harris, Royce O'Neal. These guys can shoot the basketball when they get their opportunities. We know what Dayron Sharp could potentially do as a young player. Edmund Sumner, Yuta Watanabe. These guys are good bench players. It's not out of the question this Nets team could potentially be a team that goes into the second round of the NBA playoffs. But at the same time, this Nets team has got to be able to go out there and beat some of these teams that not a lot of people are expecting them to beat if you want to be considered a serious playoff team going into the rest of the season. You got about 23 games. The schedule is not easy. Yes, I understand. But as a Nets fan, honestly, would you have it any other way? Would you rather... I know, some would rather coast through. I'd rather have be battle-tested going into the rest of the stretch. Be battle-tested against other teams that are either on your level or a little bit below or above your level. It's better to be battle-tested towards the end of the season. It's only going to make you better in preparation for the playoffs. So, what I'd like to see this Nets team do, be more consistent offensively, Put up better shots. Do a better job defensively as well. They've done very well since they made that trade. Defensively, they're better than where they were before. Especially with the length they have, on the, especially in that starting unit with Dinwiddie, Johnson, Bridges, Finney-Smith, and Claxton. You're better defensively with that lineup out there with the length you have. But at the same time, I want to see what this basketball team can do 
going into the second half of this season. Because I do think this team has potential. And now with Jacques Vaughn locked up to a long-term deal, you don't have to worry about the head coach. This team can just concentrate now on basketball. I'm sure they've been practicing in the gym, trying to get that chemistry going together with the new players that have come in last week. <laughs> this is a very interesting time for Brooklyn Nets. This is a very interesting time, Nets fans and Nets players, Nets world, Nets nation, whatever you want to say. This team, does, this team is not devoid of talent. That's what, like, I've, I don't understand when some people think that this team is not devoid of talent. They have talent still on this roster. They've just got to be able to go out there and be able to put on consistent basketball. That's what this team needs to do. Just go out there and be consistent on the court. And we should be all be able to be okay going into the second half of this season. But I expect this team to still be good second half of the season. Am I expecting an NBA championship? No. But do I think this team can still go out there and compete? And maybe go into the playoffs and win a round or two? Yeah. If Bridges, but Michael Bridges showed you some potential of what he can be. Nicholas Claxton's emerging. Cla Cam Thomas can be an offensive force. Johnson can be a good offensive player. You have good shooters on this team. This team can still do something in the second half of the season. But it all starts Friday and Sunday on two teams you definitely should beat. The Chicago Bulls on Friday in Chicago and the Atlanta Hawks on Sunday in Atlanta. Go out there and handle your business, Brooklyn. <laughs> but that's what I just want to talk about getting ready for the second half of this NBA season. You guys let me know in the comment section what you think about the second half of the season. Your expectations for the Brooklyn Nets going into the second half of this season. And... If you think this team could be a team that could make some noise going into the NBA playoffs. And let me know in the comment section what you think about the second half of the season for the Brooklyn Nets. Hit that like button. Turn on the bell for notifications. On the next video or short dropping on the channel. And like I said, let me know in the comment section what you think about the Brooklyn Nets heading into the second half. Unofficial second half of this NBA season. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great rest of your hump day Wednesday. Take it easy and let's go Brooklyn Nets as the Nets world and we're all just living in it.